Hi, and welcome to a PowerShell quick tip video. It's been a while since we've had one of these quick tip videos. And this video is actually going to be usable by pretty much anyone that's really watching these video series, as long as you have a Windows computer, basically. Um, it could be Windows 10, Windows 11, it doesn't really matter. In this case, you can even use this on a server OS as well, but I'm gonna be demonstrating it on my Windows 11 VM here. So basically what we're going to be able to do is add a bunch of Windows capabilities like RSAT tools, uh, which you might be familiar if you're working in an enterprise that has Active Directory, you might have that installed on your administrative machine. Um, we can also install the RSAT group policy. You can also install the DHCP tools, the server manager tools. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at how we can actually do that here with PowerShell. So let's go ahead and we're going to launch our PowerShell 7 as administrator. Now this is very important. If you do not launch your PowerShell as administrator, you will get an error when you try to do this. It'll say to launch PowerShell with administrative privileges. So what we're also going to do at the same time while we have this PowerShell window open, what I'm going to show you guys is in the GUI, um, when we're actually doing these actions, what's actually going on um, if we were to do this by hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the little icon here. We're going to go into settings. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into apps and then optional features. And here we're going to see a bunch of optional features that are already installed. As you can tell, I already have the RSAT tools for Active Directory and the RSAT tools for Server Manager. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing the tools for group policy. Uh, we might even do the DHCP tools as well. So as you can see, if we want to add an, an optional feature, we can definitely see them here. If we look up DHCP, we can see them right there. If we want to look up group policy, we can see the group policy management tools here as well. So now let's go ahead and let's actually dive into the PowerShell way to actually do this. So the first thing we're going to want to do, uh, let me actually just zoom, make this screen a little bit bigger here so you guys can actually see the code that I'm typing. All right, so there we go. So let's go ahead and let's do a get dash windows capability. And then we're going to put the parameter of online here. And what this is going to do, this is going to give us our list of features that we saw when we click on view features. This is the list that we see, but we can actually even see the ones that are currently installed. So here we can see the RSAT server manager. We can see that it is actually installed. So what we can even do is if we wanted to, we can actually pipe this to where date is equal to not present and this will only give us everything that's not installed so here we can actually see if we scroll up here uh, we can see that the group policy is not installed and the dhcp tools are not actually installed now typing in this name to actually install this i usually find that quite uh, painful i mean you can copy paste it but what i actually prefer to do is let's go back into our code here and when we do the get windows capability dash online what i like to add is where name dash like i always do the dash like because you don't need to type in the whole name all i do is i put in two little stars here i'll put rsat first because that's usually what they are and then after the second star i'm going to put in group and then add another star and if we actually launch this, we see that it only brings back one. If you see that it brings back multiple and you only want one, you might have to add a little bit more words in here or a little bit more letters just to make sure that you're actually filtering it. Because if we just did RSAT, we're going to notice that we actually do get a lot. So that's where we kind of want to get a little bit more granular, add the word group and another star. And if we do that, we actually get the group policy management tools and we see that they are not present. 
So let's go ahead and let's actually install them. So all we're going to do is press up so we get the same command that we just ran. We're going to add another pipe to that. And we're going to do add dash windows capability. Now, if we actually run this, a lot of people would think that this would work, but you're actually going to get an error if you try this. And that's because we need to add the dash online parameter once more here. I just actually have to add a little space. And if we go ahead and we run this, we're going to see that it is actually going to install. Now, this can take a few minutes uh, depending on your internet connection. So let's go ahead and let's wait for this to complete and we'll come back once it's all done. All right, so here we are. We can actually see that it is fully complete. We can see that the restart is not needed. And if we actually go back into our apps here, so let's go back into settings, apps, and then optional features, we can actually now see the group policy management tools is right here. And if we look at the history, we can actually see that it is installed on May 2nd, which is today. And what we can actually do is you can use the exact same thing. So you can uninstall it using this GUI as well. But all you need to do to uninstall it is let's just go ahead. I hit enter a bunch of times here by accident. Um, so all we would need to do instead of piping it to add Windows capability, you probably already know it's going to be remove Windows capability and you still need the online parameter. Um, and then you can just go ahead and hit enter here. And that will run the uninstall, of course, is usually a lot quicker than the install. So we'll just let it run and it's fully uninstalled. So now if we actually go ahead and look at the same thing, so we can actually go back into settings, go into apps here and go into optional features. And we can see that the group policy is no longer there. And if we go into see history, we can see that the group policy management tools were uninstalled. So everything is good there. So this is how you can easily install or add, I should say, Windows capabilities like the RSAT tools. And there is a list of more that you can add, uh, like the language packs. And once again, to get that list, all you need to do is get the Windows capability with the online parameter and you're going to get that list completely. Another one that's very useful um, is a lot of times a lot of people will not have PowerShell ISC installed by default. So you can actually install it using this as well, um, which is really cool because you can install the ISC. As you can tell here, I already have it installed. Um, but if you see yours is not present and you're not finding your PowerShell ISC. Now, of course, this ISC is only for PowerShell 5.1, I believe. Uh, it will not be for PowerShell 7. For PowerShell 7, you do need Visual Studio Code, as I do have a video on that on my channel as well. But as you can tell, there is a lot of language of text to speech here, a lot of speech, a lot of the ocu like OCR, handwriting, um, and then the different fonts as well, and then the basic languages. So there are a lot of things that you can actually fully do. So if you have a system at home that you want to play around with PowerShell, you don't have like a home lab where a lot of the other videos that I have kind of require a server OS. If you just want to get your hands a little bit wet in PowerShell, I'd say this is a great place to start to just get Windows capabilities and add them and uninstall them. As of course, with the other videos that I have on my channel as well, if you're just using a Windows 10 or Windows 11 box and you don't have a server, you can still do the get process and get service and just kind of get more familiar with the pipeline and using the verb noun with PowerShell. And that should be a very, very good spot to get you guys started. So thank you for watching this quick tip. If there's any type of command list that you guys would like me to look at next, please let me know in the comments section. And please um, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.